Seafood Watch is watching the science, really. I mean, that's a science-based program. So we're watching what is the science telling us about the way these species are caught and farmed. What is, if it's a, a wild-caught fish, what are the impacts to the populations of those fish? What, what's the effect on the ecosystem around those animals? You know, if I take something out, that's probably going to have an effect on maybe something that eats that, or you know, how am I disturbing that? Am I catching something in a way that might damage the seabed or someone else's house in, in the ocean? So concerning all of those things and all of those dynamics together, and that's what we're watching. We're watching what the science is telling us about the impacts of extracting from the ocean. The program actually started as an outgrowth of an exhibit that we put together in the late 90s, exploring where do we get our seafood from? Fishing for Solutions was the, was the name of the ex exhibition. And we thought, you know, if we have all these issues, we ought to think about as an institution, where do we buy our seafood from? What do we feed to our sea otters and our other animals on exhibit? What do we feed to our visitors? And let's make a list and let's, let's say these are the things we should be not buying and these are the things we should be buying. And from that, people were like, well, can I see that list? That sounds really interesting. So people started to ask and we were like, okay, we have to publish this list. So from there, we've grown from you know, a simple list to help us inform our own choices to six pocket guides that cover the whole of the US. So whichever region you're in, you can find seafood specific to your area. National Sushi Guide last year. So the program's really growing and we, we know that we have to keep revisiting the different regions and figuring out what's new. The new seafood comes up all the time, new species are being farmed. So we kind of have to keep on top of all of that and also keep on top of what's really going on in this, the markets that we've already identified. The thing to do is to be informed as a consumer and to be able to ask the right questions and preferably to have a wallet guide with you or your iPhone application that will tell you these are the species that are the better choices and these are the ones to avoid. If you're farming, it's about what you farm and where you farm. And if it's a wild caught fish, it's really about how you catch it. You'll find on our pocket guide that an animal like tuna might be on a green list, a yellow list and a red list. And that's often down to how is it caught? Is it caught in a way that's hook and line, one fish at a time? And I can control the amount I catch and I don't catch sea turtles and all these other animals that get caught? Is it caught in an industrial way with a big net where maybe some other animals get accidentally caught? Or is it caught on a, with a boat with a 60 mile line with thousands of hooks on it, indiscriminately catching everything that swims by? So, you know, there's so many different choices and that's why we try and help people with the pocket guide navigate through some of these issues because it's not straightforward by any means. How are consumers to know? You know, the, what consumers really can do is to keep asking questions. So the pocket guide has three simple questions when you go to either the store or the restaurant and that's, you know, where is this from? Uh, is it wild caught or farmed and if it was wild caught, where in the world is it from? Actually, even if it's farmed, where in the world is it from? Because if you can get answers to some of those things, that will help you hone down exactly what, what you're looking at. You know, is this an animal that was sustainably caught or farmed? Or do I not have enough information? And maybe if I don't have enough information, maybe I pick something else. Do I have the pasta tonight instead of the, you know, do I choose the chicken? Or do I ask the wait staff to find out more? So we can, as consumers, keep putting pressure on. We can't always get to the, to the answer necessarily that day. But that doesn't mean to say it doesn't make a difference because it does. And we hear this all the time from restaurants, from stores, that call us and say, people keep waving these pocket guides in front of me and they're asking these questions. How do I find out more about this? How, you know, what questions do I ask my supplier? How do I make better choices? You know, what are the choices that people are looking for? So consumers are making that difference by asking. So there's two, qu there's two purposes to asking. One is to, to try and drill down and find out what is this in front of me that I'm being offered so that I'm an informed consumer. And the other thing is to pass that pressure on to create a demand for sustainable supplies. What we've seen in the, through this is that the big companies like Walmart, and Airmark and Compass North America, who are big buyers of seafood, are feeling this demand from consumers. And so are changing their supply chain so that they can deliver what the consumer is asking for.